Thomas Payne. Thomas Payne. Thomas Payne. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Hey, come here by the radio. I've got something really neat to tell you. Listen to this. It's a great gift-giving idea. And we can send them to Bernie and Joe and Camilla and the Democrats. Listen, let's send them some glue sticks. They might mistake them for lip balm. (laughs) Good morning. Here comes Kate. And God bless America. Good morning. We need a patriot to call in with our Pledge of Allegiance. And a good, good morning to you and yours. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell on a Tuesday morning, June 25th. And glad to have you aboard. And, of course, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with the best of tires for your safe summertime driving. Don't forget to stop in and see them today. Along with some of our great advertisers, including our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 12 12- 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Well, good morning, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. I appreciate it, Wheels. Thank you. And right now, let's head right to the weather forecast brought to you by K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. You can't miss them. They're right there on the Burley Paul Highway. What a great big front yard full of equipment ready for you. The best tools and equipment for anything and everything you need to get done at K&R Rental. Not sure what you need to finish the job? Call them. They can help. They will help. 678 to K and R Rental. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. We're expecting another beautiful day here in the valley and lots of sunshine. Mostly sunny skies is what we're looking at and a high of 83. Winds out of the east at about 5 miles an hour, switching to the west by this afternoon. Gusts as high as 23. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with below 42. Tomorrow, pretty much the same. Mostly sunny skies, high of 83. A slight breeze out of the southeast at about 6 miles an hour. Mostly cloudy for tomorrow night with a low of 52. By Thursday, back to mostly sunny skies, only expecting a high of 78. Partly sunny and 73 for Friday and Saturday, mostly sunny in 80. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebra Not bad. Not bad at all. Thank you very much, Gina. We appreciate it. And the weather brought to you by k Rental, 256 South 600 West of Hayburn, like I said, on the Burley Paul Highway. Roger and the crew, they get there early in the morning to help serve you at k and Rental, 678-3122. Hey, by the way, don't forget Thursday sale day at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley, Merv, May, Cade, Roggy, Lance, Udy, at the sale that works for you. Absolutely, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. The number to call for cattle consignments and sale information, 678-9411. Thursday, sale day at 1030 at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard. You be there. Well, we've got another outstanding program this morning. We're going to be talking to a dear friend of mine at 906 with the Institute for Energy Research and talking about the complete idiocy 
of the Green New Deal. Dan Kish is going to be on the program. And then at 9.30, Cashew County uh, Communications Director Debbie Critchfield. Look forward to having her on the air. And Dr. History at 10.06, Jeremy Dice, the Deputy General Counsel for First Liberty, is going to be on talking about the Supreme Court decision on letting the crosses stand. We're going to have that at 10.30. Don't forget our friends at Daryl cleaners hello kevin cindy the whole crew you know if you don't have time to do your washing you're running here running there running late i'll tell you what bring them in there to daryl's they'll wash dry fold and iron all your clothes just like mama used to do and what a job they do and the best in dry cleaning oh i know i've been going in there for years and years daryl's cleaners 1223 albion avenue in burley please stop in and see the best today and let them help you and when you go to pick up your clothes you're gonna go holy moly i didn't know they looked that good daryl's cleaners in burley and without further ado we take our first phone call caller good morning you're on the air good morning it's a burley senior center on south overland we're having chicken pot pie green salad and yummy dessert today welcome me everybody only five bucks Okay, and again, you didn't tell us what the yummy dessert is, Joe. What's your yeah, best I'm guess? Let that out yet. <laughs> okay. I'll guess uh, chocolate cake. All right. Well, listen, you have an extra piece for me, if you would. I'll do that. You deserve it. Oh, my friend, and thank you. Thank you so much for taking my call. You betcha. The Senior Center on Overland in Burley. Great people like Joe Taylor. Stop over there and enjoy your lunch. Really good folks. I uh, want to remind you, too, but when I say really good folks, it just kind of joins hand-in-hand hand with our friends over at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. All, all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs right there at Ramsey Heating and Electric. 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, 678-0459. The number to give them a call. They're open early in the morning at 730 to 5, Monday through Friday. Over six decades of serving you at Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by. Also want to remind everybody that this Thursday, mm -hmm, day after tomorrow, Thursday at 1130, we're going to be at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner at 611 North Overland in Burley for the next edition of Zeb's Lunch Bunch, a very special one this time, because Deanne and I and Denny's are going to give all of the attendees a special little treat. So everybody be there at Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley. Wow, what great menu choices. Just really nice people serving you at at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant. We also want to thank Walmart, Smith's Foods, Handsome Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin, and Denny's for all of our door prize drawings. Thank you very, very much. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Jeff. Yes, sir. You know, you know, I never have been an advocate of minimum wage. And what these Democrats are proposing now, $15 an hour, is ludicrous. And I'll tell you why. For one thing, if you're working for minimum wage right now, it will almost double your taxes that you pay. But that's just another thing. But what happens is by doing that, that brings the cost of food way up high because they got to double their prices. Everything is double, 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 except your, your and my social security. Well, basically, to be in a lot of hurt. Yeah, basically, it's not just Social Security recipients. It's everybody with their income levels. And here's the problem. It's easy for these dumb Democrats, and that's what they are. I'm not going to mollycoddle it. Keith, if somebody's offended, they can turn the dial. It's stupidity pushing for a $15 minimum wage because what they're saying is, oh, well, these people have to have a wage, a living wage. Well, it's not a living wage. Let's get something straight. That entry-level jobs should not have living wage 
wages. Number two, it's going to put a lot of jobs and a lot of businesses out of existence. And number three, how do you extend it to pay your other employees that have been there loyal to you in the past more money than the entry level fifteen dollars an hour? It's a it's a snowball that gets bigger as it rolls downhill, and it's all negative. A good example of that is I have a granddaughter that went to work for a fast food place right here in Burley, probably started out at minimum wage, and within a short time, she's become a manager and knows how to do everything there, and she makes about $15 an hour, I think, but she has earned her way. What is wrong with that program? No, there's nothing wrong with it. It should all be on the merits of hard work and responsibility. And I'm sick and tired of these people advocating, well, you need to have an entry-level job wage of $15 an hour. Are you kidding me? Give me a break. There's nobody in the world at an entry-level job that's worth $15 an hour. Remember 30 or 40 years ago when an insurance agent came around to you and said, hey, we've got to help you by selling you insurance that will help you in your retirement years, and it's going to take X amount of dollars to do that. Well, if we adhered to that, we'd be broke yet. I, uh, I'm, I'm really at the point this morning, listening to all the absolute bird chatter that's coming out of the Democrats' mouths, like Bernie Sanders with introduction of a bill that would uh, eliminate $1.6 trillion in student loans. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, my dear friend. I am absolutely teed off about the stupidity of the Democratic Socialist Party. Keith, thanks, buddy. I appreciate your call. All right, thank you. Uh, Don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Boy, they have got some outstanding people working over there, serving you with the best of exercises and, of course, everything to get you over your aching and paining and maybe uh, recoup from a surgery or an accident. They've also got that hydrotherapy pool, the only one of its kind in this area. Oh, they are good. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue. Avenue Suite 2 in Burley. I urge you to go to the phone right now and give them a call. Make an appointment. 678-1191. I'll repeat. 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation serving you. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by. I also want to remind everybody about Rain for Rent. These are wonderful people that really, they know irrigation. And they know what you need. And they can help you right now this morning. Get a hold of them, and that's Jake and the crew over at Rain for Rent at 134 South, 600 West of Paul. Number to call, he'll probably pick up the phone and say, Howdy, what can we do for you? 438 5065. They're a Reinke Diamond dealer, and believe me, they have the most dedicated sales and service staff working with and for you. Get a hold of them today. Rain for Rent. And they're located again at 134 South, 600 West of Paul. That number, 438-5065. Rain for rent. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Bell. Yes, ma'am. You know, (laughs) I am sick and tired of Bernie Sanders and Kamala Harris and uh, Elizabeth Warren and all those other stupid idiots saying that they're going to reduce or eliminate the uh, student debt. What the heck is that going to do to our economy? (laughs) You know, whatever happened to working through, I have a grandson who did a four-year term up at, at ISU. He worked two jobs to pay for his college. Well, yeah. My my niece did a six-year stint at BSU and she is now an office manager of one of the big veterinary clinics down there and a vet tech. She did it all on her own. Yep. She worked. Her and her husband both put themselves through school. Well, they don't have student debt. 
Well, for those of us, and Wheels, there's a little bit of feedback there. For those of us, and I'm referring to myself in this, Donna, and if you or anybody else is offended by me telling the truth, then so be it. But for those of us that had early, early morning classes, and I did, I had a class starting at 7.45 and at college, well, that kind of trickled down to be a problem because I had a job from 1 in the afternoon until 9 at night. I would get back to my dorm room around 10 o'clock. It was an hour's drive from my work back to my dorm room, and I'd get there by 10 or 10.30. I'd study till 1 or 1.30 to catch up on all my scholastic needs for the next day. Then I'm up at 5.30 and had to drive to the campus. I have no sympathy whatsoever for the elimination of student debt. They wanted to go to school. They wanted to study for some career. Then they pay for it. I am not the least bit offended um, by what you just said. In fact, I'm proud of you for doing what you did. I'm proud of my grandchildren and, and my nieces and nephews who have put themselves through school. They were taught, if you want something in life, you have to work for it. What they're doing is trying to create a socialist uh, environment, and pretty soon we're going to run out of the money that the people are paying in. Well, and then what are they going to do? Donna, we work. And I'm going to stand up and say, doggone it, I worked. And and I know you and many, 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 many others did that are listening to this broadcast. We worked. We paid. We studied. We graduated. We succeeded. And then my question is, why can't they? Because everybody keeps telling them, well, we'll give you this, 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 and this. And that's what's happening. We are creating a give-me society, and like I said, pretty soon the taxpayers that are paying into this fund are going to go broke, or they're going to leave the country. Yeah, and, the and then what are they going to do? Yeah, Donna, how many people have you talked to, and hopefully not very many in this area, but how many people have you talked to and they say, well, times are different today than they were when you went to school. No, they're not. If you want an education and you want to go to school to study some subject, then doggone it, pay for it yourself. This airhead Bernie Sanders with a wild flying around gray hair, he wants Wall Street to pay for it, which is really stupid because in essence, you know who that is? That Wall Street is going to trickle down to us. We still pay. You betcha. And you know what? You would be surprised how many people I hear that from. Well, it's different now than it was even 20 years ago. Well, of course it is. But it's the people who have changed, not not the place and not the rule of law, but the people have changed because they listen to these idiotic people who say you can get something for nothing. Yeah. I've never been given anything in my lifetime. I have had to work for everything I get. I can't agree with you more. I mean, there's times that you and I have a difference of opinion, but not on this. I'm telling you straight up that I appreciate your comment because education is never going to be free. Health care is never and never should be free. The Green New Deal of Energy, they want us to pay through the nose for this. And all you see is the opening up of your pocketbook, your billfold, or your credit card, and the Democrats take the money and run to Joe's Go, just go spend it on any project they want. Yeah. No, I'm proud of the fact that, you know, our generation, and we're not that far apart in age, um, our generation was taught, you know, responsibi- taking responsibility for our own actions. If you want something, you dang well better work for it. Well, to say that you're going to wipe off the slate, 1.6 trillion with a T, and even though I graduated uh, from higher learning, when I start talking trillions, you're losing me, uh, in student loan debt, I mean, this is absolutely ludicrous. And for the Democrats to say this, not one, not one, not one vote should go at the polls in 2020 for a Democrat that's a socialist that wants to ruin America. Oh, I totally agree. And, you know, they're they're part of the problem. You know, Bernie Sanders is a hypocrite. He's a damn billionaire. <laughs> well. He's talking about, you know, 
he's got all this property and all these houses and blah, blah, blah. I could go on forever. But anyway, I'm proud of the fact that we work for what we get, and we still work for what That's we right. get. That's right. That's right. Donna, so, I, I've got to run. Have a great day. I appreciate friend. it. Thank you so much. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't you dare go away. I want to remind everybody that it's just, just a matter of days, just a matter of days, the Rupert Fourth of July celebration is going to kick off, celebrating Independence Day the Rupert way, or the Grand Marshals Dean and Linda Cameron. It's going to start this Saturday, the 29th at 6 in the morning, 6 in the morning, at the Rupert Square with the Christmas lighting breakfast, and then, of course, it continues all the way on virtually through July 7th with horse races at the fairgrounds. Wow! I mean, don't forget a minute of all the fun and festivities going on over at your Rupert 4th of July celebration of Independence Day, including the Firecracker 500 lawnmower race on thir- uh, Wednesday, July 3rd. Oh my goodness, they have a lot of fun in Rupert. You should be a part of it. The great big 4th of July schedule for Independence Day at Rupert. Going to be phenomenal. Also, quickly, I want to remind you about our friends at Ark Animal Hospital. Hello, Dr. Bill and the crew. Hey, he's getting old. He loves me saying that. Dr. Bill's getting old. He's going to have a birthday coming up in a couple of days. He's still behind me, though. And don't forget, you better take care of your animals and deworm your horses and make sure that all the puppies have their vaccinations and take care of the kitty cats. And, oh, my goodness, all the way up to your dairy cattle and everything else. They are a mixed animal practice, large and small. They serve them all at Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hay- Burn and the number six seven eight one one seven seven. You know, at Ark Animal Hospital with Doctor Bill and the crew, they do have warm hearts for cold noses. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, Zeb. Uh, you know the the key thing here is work. You know, socialism, communism started because uh, Karl Marx was as filthy and as lazy as a man that there ever was. And he was trying to figure out a way to get out of work. There isn't a communist, a socialist, who probably enjoys any kind of work. You know, Bernie Sanders, he's, his, uh, he's never worked a day in his life, and he's a multimillionaire. I, I don't know how he ever got it, but, you know, that's what happens when you're back there. And uh, you see, they're all just lazy they, they, they have no intentions of working. The students no longer would do what you did. They don't have the gumption to do it. They're distracted. They're victims. They're everything but hardworking people who see an opportunity. You know, America is in the land of the home of the free and the land of the brave, you know, whatever. But, but you see, we have to be courage, courageous. We have to be strong. We've got to get up in the morning and go to work. I don't know. I don't know if the young people know how to work anymore, Deb. Well, I think the work ethic should be taught at the uh, grade school, elementary, high school, college level because it's gone in this country. I've talked to many, many economists like Dr. Michael Bussler that's on my program from New Jersey many, many times. And the implementation and the restoration of the work ethic in America has got to start soon or we're just nothing more than a nation of tin cuppers sitting on a city street corner begging for more. That's all we're going to if we don't change this thing around as soon as possible. And I'll tell you what, uh, no votes. No votes for Democrats because they're going to be the ruination of this country. And quite frankly, there needs to be some throwing out of some of the Republicans, too. We need a purging back there. Well, a $15 you know, minimum wage is a joke. If you want a job, there's tons of them. Everywhere I look, they're hiring. In the, in the next few years, we're going to have 170,000 jobs, truck driving jobs shortage. I, unless I'm mistaken, I'm sure that's what I read. It's so insane that we can't even find anybody to do the work. People don't know how to work. They don't care to work. They're distracted. They're everything but hardworking. You know, I'm happy and grateful for my blessings. And, I, and work is, is, is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And it gives me the opportunity. If I don't go out and work, I have nothing. 
When I see people waiting at the Walmart driveway or over at Maverick or wherever, begging, and they look to me like they're in totally physically fine health. You know what? I know people around this town that are blind, that are in wheelchairs, who work every day and are happy. These people with these excuses, it's a joke. Well, let me let me interrupt you quick instead of letting you ramble there because I want to interject on a point you made and you're 100% right. I've seen these people sitting at these corners going into Walmart and other places or McDonald's or wherever the case might be. And my question has always been if they've got the time to sit there in fairly nice clothes on a lawn chair with their puppy dog sitting in their lap, whatever the case might be, they got the time to sit there and soak up the rays of the sun and tin cup it and beg for you and I for a living or for gasoline or food or whatever the case might be, why don't they take that same amount of effort, which is none in that lawn chair, and parade down Overland Avenue and look at all the marquees that are begging for help and get their dead butt to work? They don't have any. It's, I don't know what it's like to be lazy. I couldn't stand to lay around and do nothing. But you see, that's just not, I don't understand that. I don't understand how you lay around and do nothing. I don't even hear the kids. I live in a very nice neighborhood, and, and you know, it used to be you walk outside on a sunny uh, summer morning, and you could hear the kids screaming and yelling and playing and riding their bikes. And it, they're they're in the house. They're on their phones. They're doing something. I agree. Come out. Randy, I got to run and get a commercial in, but you've touched a nerve with me, especially for all the tin cuppers that are sitting around the nation today not doing anything. With all the jobs that are available, they sit there and they want us to hand them a five dollar bill, ten dollar bill, whatever. No, I wouldn't give them the time of day. Thank you very much. I'll tell you, that just frustrates me, and I'm glad he brought that up. Oh, by the way, I know something else that's starting this weekend. Oh, boy, you don't want to miss it. World-famous Idaho regatta. Mm -mm. They're going to be bringing in the best of speedboats that absolutely knock your socks off. Fun to watch. Different classes of all these speedboats, some of which can go up to 140 miles an hour. Whoa! Idaho Regatta starts Thursday with the show and shine in Rupert, where you can get a close-up look at all these boats. And then on Friday, the boat parade in Burley. And then Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday, all the big races down at the Burley Golf Course Marina. Don't miss it. Get your tickets now if you haven't already. And be there for the fun and the excitement. Go to IdahoRegatta.org and find out more information about the tickets and everything else and the time schedules. It is going to be great the Idaho Regatta for 2019, starting on Thursday. Whoa! World-famous Idaho Regatta. Wheels, old buddy, old pal, can we have this good word for the Silver State Stampede? Follow the crowd of family entertainment at its best. The 2019 Silver State Stampede roars into Elko July 12, 13, and 14 at the Elko County Fairgrounds. Kicking off this fast-paced weekend is the annual Tri-Tip Dinner on Friday, along with Mutton Bust and Old West Bronc Riding, PRCA Rodeo Action, the always popular Ring of Fear, and new this year, Mini Bull Riding. The fun continues on Saturday and Sunday with more PRCA Rodeo Action, and you can dance the night away with the music of Moonshine Outlaws. Get your advance tickets today at Roy's, J.M. Capriola Company, IFA, The Boot Barn, and the Elko Chamber of Commerce. Don't forget the best in the West is waiting for you at the Silver State Stampede, July 12, 13, and 14. For more information, visit us at SilverStateStampede.com. Head to the Elko County Fairgrounds for the one, the only Silver State Stampede. Rope and ride on the wild side. There you go. And by the way, too, uh, I want to mention again some of the great merchants that are going to be welcoming you to the Rupert Fourth of July celebration for Independence Day. And they include Magic Valley Carpet at 613 D Street in Rupert. Oh, for all your flooring needs, don't forget to get a hold of Magic Valley Carpet. Wonderful people, over 35 years of experience. Along with Haskin Insurance Service, 629 Fremont Street in Rupert. Number to call, you should call, 435-2000. 
888-436-4141. And they want to wish all their customers and friends a very happy and safe 4th of July Independence Day. And don't forget, too, they've got all the insurance coverage you need right there. They are your partner in insurance protection at Haskin Insurance Service. And Snyder Surplus. Wow, I always enjoy going over to that store. 116 South, 200 West of Rupert. And they opened that store in 1997, and I'll tell you what, they've got everything. (laughs) Everything in there, believe me. And uh, if you need it, you probably will find it at Snyder Surplus at 116 South, 200 West of Rupert, and they wish you a great, big, happy Independence Day. All right, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give us a call. Love to hear from you. I want to say this, and again, if someone is offended by this, you have two opportunities. Turn the dial or sit and listen to it. My wife and I were watching the news last night, and unfortunately, it was right before our supper, and we saw on television news show the sick, perverted, pathetic gyrations of a fat, ugly drag queen parading and dancing and gyrating call her stay with me in front of little children at a drag queen story fest at a library a public library how low and how evil and how absolutely despicable can we get and you know what else i I don't care who's offended by this one It's right here in Twin Falls. And our local birdcage bottom, the Times News, seems to endorse this. Carrying pictures and stories about this filth. I am really upset about this. I'm going to talk more about it in a minute. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Morning, Jeff. I uh, I want to... My feelings on the whole thing with kids anymore are... The parents, as parents, we're not encouraging them to get outside as much as, as, as uh, my parents encouraged them and the, and the generations before, or to go outside and get some fresh air or uh, go to work. We're too busy wrapped up in our own things. Most parents, I should say all, but some are, and don't push those kids to go outside and do things. I uh, encouraged my son, who's 17, to get a job as soon as he could to learn some work ethic, and he's working. And he enjoys it, and he has money, and he understands the value of money. My 15-year-old has got a little side deal he does during the summer to help earn his way to uh, race his bicycle and, and uh, to help and it's, uh, for parents to say, you know, let the babysitter or the PlayStation or, or whatever be your babysitter and stay out of my hair while i got to get things done. And I, I do place a lot of blame on parents, and I'm not perfect by any means. But that's my feeling. And letting them go to these public libraries to hear this crap and this filth about drag queens and all oh. that kind of crap, that's uh, pretty messed up myself. I wouldn't allow my kids to do that. Well, and they shouldn't be. And they should be closed down. And this whole thing is just absolutely despicable. You know, I honestly think that God is just waiting right now to slam the door on the human race for the absolute revulsion that the human race is doing across the board, not only here in this country, but around the world. And I'm just going to tell you this. At a library, at a library, they call it where they're going to have the reading of little children, and they're doing this kind of filth. And at one library, library listen to this this will knock your boots off at one library where they were doing these drag queen readings there was a table outside where they could learn more about becoming a drag queen and the homosexual lifestyle and they were also supplying at the library on this table condoms this is absolutely i i'm just absolutely ready to start opening the doors and going in and throwing people and things out of there uh yeah uh, my thought on that is, how many times have, have uh, as a parent, have you had one of your kids, you try to help them out, you try to show them the right way, you, you even discipline them, and they still get hard-headed and think, you know what, 
I, I know already. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. And then you have to stand back and watch them fall and watch them fall hard. Then when you go over, when they're trying to get up out of the dirt and out of the muck, you go over and say, now are you going to listen to me? And sometimes I wonder if that's what our good Lord's doing to us. Because for so long, so many people have denied him, especially, especially recent current events. So many people have denied the Lord in their lives that I think I feel sometimes he's just standing back and saying, you know, child, I tried to help you. I tried. I begged and pleaded with you, and now you're going to have to figure it out. I'll Amen. It you're going to have to figure it out. Riley, I appreciate your comments. I really do. Thank you so much. I really do. And I'm just going to say this before I do a commercial break. Ministers, pastors, I've asked you to call. Only one has had the nerve. There's uh, subject material for your sermons every week about how to better clean up the community, ours included. And you won't call. You won't be a part of this program. You won't do anything except hide behind perhaps your pulpit. I am just really lividly mad at the lack of response of the clergy. Shame on you. Don't forget Barry Equipment and Rental, sales, service, and parts. And, of course, they're located at 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and the Napa location. If you need anything lift up, dig, uh, dug, I should say, push or carried, they've got all the excavators and the mowers and the loaders, everything. They've got the absolutely cream of the crop with the deuce on wheel loaders and excavators, and they've got all the bobcats and all the different different sizes, all the skid steers, mini excavators, everything at Berry Equipment and Rental. Whether you're buying, whether you're renting, it's all there. Burley, Twin Falls, and Nampa work with the best that can help you get the job done. Berry Equipment and Rental. Real quick, too, I want to remind you, um, we have a caller, and then we're going to do a weather forecast. Stand by. I'm, I was going to do the weather, but we'll do that in just a minute. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. I remember a verse in the Bible that talks about when you're leading the innocent astray, how you will, how your soul will be damned. Yes. I mean, it, it's very sad to take somebody so impressionable as a child and do that to them. Did you see? I, I got, I'm lack of time this morning, but I'm so furious over this subject. Did you see on television what I'm talking about? No, but I heard an announcement of it on the radio and who they were going to have there to show these kids that different lifestyles. The city of Twin Falls should go down to the city council with pitchforks and demand those folks resign and the public library they should go and demand that that librarian resign because this is evil well this, this is of satan doug let me tell you this uh, last night was on uh, martha mccallum's show uh, where they had uh, similar circumstances with the drag queens going to the libraries. It was the same circumstances to what we saw saw in the Times News pictorially a couple of days ago. And I, my wife and I, honestly, we sat there and we thought, my gosh, how in the world could you let this happen in a public library where some of these little kids sitting there listening to these filthy, perverted people were as young as three, maybe to five years old? I sat there and I thought, their young minds are just absolutely being so distorted. Well, it is, it is shameful, and I, I have no words to express how I feel for an adult that will do this to a child. But on the other hand, what kind of a parent would take their child to an event like this? That... <laughs> I mean, they must not love that child very much. Well, look at it this way. I have, I've got on this radio program since Christmas, and I've asked pastors to be a part of this, whether we're talking about the abortion issue or whether we're talking about filth like this in our society. There's a lot of things that need to be cleaned up in any and all communities. One, 
one pastor has had the nerve to step forward and come on this program. What does that tell you about the cowardice that's going on in churches for fear that they might offend someone within their congregation? They'd rather offend God than they would that person. Exactly. I'm worried about offending God. I don't care who I offend on this earth. I do not want to offend God. Now, I'll tell you something, Doug. This subject, uh, when I saw this last night, uh, sure took away my hunger pain because I could hardly eat after that. It was so pathetic. And the media, they're as much of a coward and uh, helping this situation as anybody because they're promoting it. Exactly. Exactly. And everybody, let's, let's stand up and tell the city council, let's tell our librarians, if this stuff goes on, we're going to demand they resign. Absolutely. And let's go down there with pitchforks and demand it and everybody on a little lighter note let's do what we can for our senior centers amen help them let's support them let's go eat lunch there you will be totally amazed of how you come out feeling all right doug hey listen i always can depend on you thank you very much thank you weather forecast next brought to you by and caller number two i will be there in a minute don't you dare hang up uh weather forecast brought to you by mount harrison audiology and hearing aids and they're located right behind the minidoka hospital across from the emergency room and believe me they can help your hearing health needs they help me they can certainly help you i urge you to call for a hearing screening today the number to call 312-0957 three doctors of audiology absolutely know the business and can help you Mount Harrison audiology and hearing aids and right now here's Gina with the weather we're expecting another beautiful day here in the valley and lots of sunshine mostly sunny skies is what we're looking at and a high of 83 winds out of the east at about five miles an hour switching to the west by this afternoon Gus as high as 23 Tonight, partly cloudy skies with a low 42. Tomorrow, pretty much the same. Mostly sunny skies, high of 83. A slight breeze out of the southeast at about 6 miles an hour. Mostly cloudy for tomorrow night with a low of 52. By Thursday, back to mostly sunny skies. Only expecting a high of 78. Partly sunny and 73 for Friday and Saturday, mostly sunny and 80. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebra Duran. Thank you, Gina. And the weather brought to you this hour by our friends at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And again, I urge you to call that number to make an appointment at 312-0957. Caller, you have been extremely patient. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Zeb, you know, 50 years ago, I went to the art museum in Boise, and they had a gay art day. When I got done in there, I left early. I didn't get all the way through it. I went into my house, and I took every piece of art out. I have never been to an art museum again. I never will go to one. And I'll never, ever, ever, as long as I live, have a piece of art hanging in my house for any reason because of that visit to that art museum. It made me sick to my stomach. I thought it was horrible. And I still feel the same way to this day. It has not changed one speck. It's just something we just cannot allow. We do not need. And I'm sorry for all the good artists out there because I've sure missed a lot of good art. But I'm not going to take a chance just because of one visit to one horrible, despicable, rotten, horrible art museum that showed this kind of art. I would never go back again for any reason. You know, Jerry, I I agree with you, and I'm just going to say something, and I want to get your short response on this because I'm limited on time, but I honestly believe that we are living right now in a very contaminated society that absolutely needs to be cleaned up, but nobody seems to want to step forward. Well, I think we all have to step forward, and I've stepped forward by doing away with the art in my house. There has never been another piece of art on my wall anywhere. I appreciate never it. Will be. Jerry, you're always welcome on this program. Uh, you're a dear friend. Thank you very much for your call. I appreciate it. And may the Lord bless you and your whole audience. All right. Thank you very much. A wonderful day and a wonderful week. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I and caller number two, don't go away. I'll be right there, I promise. Ladies and gentlemen, I am blessed to announce that as the days go by in the future, we're going to be talking about a business that is serving seniors. And it's Greystone Crossing, independent senior living, feels like home. I am so impressed with the many, many pieces of literature and information about the independent living. There's up to 16 senior residents. We'll live together as a family, benefiting from social interaction and stimulation while enjoying meals together at Greystone Crossing. Uh, as we go on, every day the advertisements on this program are going to be different. And we're going to be telling you more about Greystone Crossing. And they extend the ability of seniors to live independent of full-time care. I urge you to call them and find out more. The number 208 650 four nine seven nine once again i'll repeat that two oh eight six five zero four nine seven nine graystone crossing independent senior living it feels like home be sure and get a hold of them today wonderful people at graystone crossing caller good morning you're on the air yes i'd like to thank all these people who have called in about this uh your debt for going to school. Student loan debt forgiveness. There should not be such a thing. And I'll tell you what will happen if this does happen. And that is the fact that these people will go into debt no matter what circumstances there is because they want to live now and face the consequences later. Well, if you're taking a course in college of basket weaving and how to glue a picture frame together, uh, and you're spending all this money, uh, you're a complete income poop that's never going to be anything but uh, highly uh, poor and untalented in the future, and just nothing more than a tin cupper on a street corner in any city in America. If you want to go and really be something and use the assets and the attributes that God gave you, go ahead, go to school, pay for it, and you will be successful. Successful because you know the work ethic. Well, if you need to get a student loan, you need to have a sponsor, like your parents, grandparents, or somebody that's willing to vouch for you and to sign up for it. Because at this point, the banks will give anybody a student loan because they know the government is going to guarantee it. And that's just absolutely so... There's words that are coming to my mind right now that I can't use because of FCC uh, disqualifications. <laughs> I have to be so careful. I just don't understand why people can't pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Look at what they want to do for their future. Look at what they want to do for their entirety of life of being a, a self-supporting taxpayer in this, the greatest country in the world. And if you want the education to be a lawyer, go pay for it. If you want the education to be an electrician, go pay for it. But why should everybody else be subservient to your bills? Shouldn't be. God bless you. Thanks. You bet. All right. Thank you, Keith. I just, uh, our society, I use the word contaminated, and it is. We are looking at a contaminated society. We're looking at a lack of work ethic. We're looking at a lack of respect. Oh, well, if I go get it, I don't have to pay for it. We'll just let somebody else pick up the tab. What happened to us? And there are those that will wait till after the program is over. There are those that will send me all these nasty emails and these uh, calls where I don't know who they are. And they'll condemn me and criticize me and damn me and everything else you want to say. But I'm giving you the opportunity to call on the air if you've got a dissenting opinion. And it looks like the other side is gutless. And they are. We want to thank our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, for all they do in serving you and me. 
That's where I go. Absolutely. They've got the best of tires for any and all driving conditions and all your vehicles, your cars, SUVs, trucks, horse trailers, boat trailers, camp trailers, whatever. All the different tread designs, all the different sizes. Oh, yeah. The word all is really true. They got it all. They've got it all at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see any one of the seven locations. And also, don't forget, the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, all of this. There's that word again, all of this and more. See Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line and Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley. The best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Well, we didn't get a chance to cover some of the other stories I had for this morning. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Mexico doing a lot more to help shore up our borders and what our Congress is. You know, I want to say this before we leave for this hour. I salute the Border Patrol. I salute ICE for the excellent job they are trying to do to defend us and our country. And I condemn members of Congress for doing nothing. We're going to take a little break and send it over to wheels. And coming up next hour, we're going to be talking to my dear, dear friend Dan Kish with the Institute for Energy Research. Also talking to Cache County Schools uh, Communication Officer and Director, Debbie Critchfield. All of that coming up on Zeb at the Ranch. You stay tuned. Don't go away. Don't forget Lunch Bunch on Thursday at Denny's. 1130. We'll see you there. Wheels, it's all yours. Uh, you better uh, keep the music going when you noticed I wasn't there, Wheels. I was talking. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Zeb at the Ranch and the music ran out, and here I am. Zeb at the Ranch on a Tuesday. Our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with the best in safe driving tires. And, of course, don't forget some of our great uh, advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Woo. Right now, wheels, this good word for Western Waste. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're rolling the Georgia stores of Western Waste, and it's because we care about our community, our resources, and this free land. Western Waste Service says it's lending a hand, always at Georgia stores of Western Waste Service. Always, always is at your disposal, whether you get on the route pickup and once a week they come by and get your ch- your garbage and send it off in the garbage land, or whether you need dumpsters in various sizes to clean out the basement, the garage, or whatever, or maybe porta potties for the upcoming uh, picnic or the family reunion or the company picnic, whatever, all of this and more. They are always at your disposal. Call them today, 734-6969. Western Waste Services. I want to also remind you about a good, good friend of ours. And I bought two camper shells from this man, and I swear by him and his service. He is so diligent. Save on shells, 1827 Overland and Burley, and the number to call Anthony to make sure he's there and not out serving somebody's camp or someplace. I'll tell you what, this guy is phenomenal and will save you money on new or used shells and lids. Quality service, low prices, at their best, right there, save on shells. 1827 Overland and Burley. Anthony absolutely has one thing in mind, and that's you, the customer. Please give them a call, 312-1525. Save on shells at 1827 Overland in Burley.
Before we go to our guest, I want to remind you, too, about our dear friends at Hanson Mortuary. We thank them very much every day. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward, his family, and his staff, serving you and your family with the best possible support and comfort. And always remember this, always upholding the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. When there's the passing of a loved one, please... Remember Hanson Mortuary in Rupert. The number to call, 436-5636. That number again, 436-5636. And Joel Heward also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. A uh, big reminder, of course, uh, on Mondays at 1030, we've got Vicky's Country Garden. Don't forget that. Uh, green Thumbs, Dirty Knees, and Vicky's Country Garden right here on Zebeth Ranch. Mondays at 1030. Don't you miss it. Right now, a man that's been waiting patiently on the phone line, a very dear friend of mine, and to this program with the Institute for Energy Research. Good morning, Dan Kish. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. I'm great, and hope you are as well. Well, I am. I'm having a little trouble hearing you, Dan. It's a little faint, but I just wanted you to kind of speak up and tell us everything that's going on. Um, I understand that this new Green Deal back in New York, uh, Governor Cuomo is really trying to drag that thing in front of the people of New York and force it down their throats. Tell us a little bit about more what's going on. Well, there, uh, Zeb, uh, this is going on in a couple places around the country. California started it. New York is uh, probably going to outdo California on this. But the basic idea is they're going to stop all carbon dioxide emissions by a certain date. I think it's 2040. I get it mixed up, and besides, they change their mind every day. Um, uh, it's, it's a game of one-upsmanship. And uh, so they're going to stop using natural gas, they're going to stop using coal, they're going to stop using gasoline, and uh, uh, (laughs) and it's going to be fun to watch. I feel for the poor people of uh, New York, you know, the, the, the funny thing about New York, it's not funny, is a huge part of New York is rural. There's a lot of folks in upstate New York and western New York who don't think anything like those people in Manhattan, but they've got all the people, so they pretty much run the show. And so uh, despite the fact they don't need any of those uh, things in New, uh, in New York City or think they don't need any of them, uh, a lot of people have to get to work at school and church and uh, all the rest of the things and haul the stuff that the cities rely on to them. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe maybe we're going back to wagons. So you and I ought to start up a wagon wheel uh, factory. You know, it, we can make fun of this, and we can sit here and go tee hee about maybe having a wagon wheel factory or recreating the old Studebaker wagons for that uh, were used on the Oregon Trail. But it's not funny because it's it may come to fruition. Dan, I am really afraid of people in power that are idiots and have a combined IQ of an angle worm that are trying to force us and coerce us into paying trillions and trillions of dollars to regress. Yeah, Zeb, I mean, you're absolutely right. I think, I think your listeners are probably right there, too. The fact of the matter is these folks don't know which end of a horse uh, is which, and and when it comes to when it comes to these things, they may be all schooled up in uh, college and and all the rest. But most of what they teach there is trash, and so they don't know anything about how the real world works. They don't understand any history because they don't teach it to them, except for how bad the United States is and Western civilization in general, and. So, basically, what they want to do is break things. It's it's uh, it's nihilistic. Uh, it's it's if this is a system we have, it must not be good because we don't deserve that, and therefore we should destroy it. And it's very dangerous because when you start talking about when you're talking about energy infrastructure, when you're talking about the stuff that keeps people alive, makes our lives possible, allows people to 
sit down with their gadgets and, uh, you know, cruise the Internet and all the rest. Uh, but there's no relationship in their minds between the fact that they have these things and they have them as a consequence of, of energy. Uh, we find ourselves in, you know, that's just plain dumb ignorance. Um, and yet that's what's going on. And you got politicians who are shopping for votes who will try to sell this stuff to anybody that will buy it with a vote. So uh, that that's what's going on. And, I mean, heck, you got... When you, uh, over in Oregon, you got uh, legislatures running for the border to get out of there so that uh, uh, the governor and, and her majorities can't uh, put the same sort of program in place in Oregon. It'll kill rural Oregon. Dan, I have some information here, and I'm sure that your office has it also. But with the Governor Cuomo of New York really standing up as an advocate that anybody that doesn't believe in climate change is an idiot, anybody that doesn't go along with his Green New Deal is an idiot, well, who's the real idiot when New York right now has a 2 Point three billion with the B hole in the state budget, and they're nearly broke. Who's the real idiot? Well, yes, I mean, that's only going to get worse because these programs haven't necessarily gone in place yet. I mean, New York's electricity rates are going up. Uh, California's electricity rates are going up, and they're going up fast. Everybody who's playing around with this, uh, saying, "Gee, we're going to do this all on wind and solar," their electricity rates are going up, and uh, you know, last time I checked, price of natural gas and coal are going down. So what's going on here? Um, and it, it doesn't take a genius, and thank God because there aren't a lot of them in politics, uh, to figure out that something is amiss here, and we've got these sorts of programs, but it just seems like states that go down this path and buy into all of this stuff, buy into the same sorts of things when it comes to economic responsibility and uh, uh, financial responsibility to the taxpayers and, and, and the rest. So, um, yeah, people are moving out of New York uh, as fast as they can to go to other places because eventually you just throw up your hands. Same thing happening in California. Dan, uh, there was a sentence that I want you to elaborate on uh, in the great piece that was sent to me about this uh, Cuomo idiocy in New York. And uh, I'm just going to paraphrase a little bit of it. This comprehensive plan to go to the Green New Deal to make New York carbon neutral by significantly and cost-effectively, there's some key words, reducing emissions from all major sources, and they include electricity, transportation, buildings, industry, commercial activity, and agriculture. Now, with your expertise, I want you to define how each one of those uh, categories, starting with electricity and going all the way to agriculture, how they are going to reduce emissions at a cost-effective point without going out of business. Well, they don't get into any of the details, Zap. I mean, let me say that. They just passed these broad goals. We're going to do this by such and such date. Eighty-five uh, percent reduction in carbon dioxide, I believe it's by 2040, and the, um, and the rest of the 15 percent to make ourselves carbon neutral will come from offsets, whatever those are, uh, growing trees, I guess. Uh, but they won't let you cut a tree in in <laughs> in New York. So what, what's the difference? And um, it, ultimately, what they're talking about here is this is not this is not some small hand of the government on the rudder. This is a complete takeover of the New York economy, which is run by energy. I mean. It, it gets cold there. They need to move things. It's a big state, um, and they need they need energy. And if you're going to take all of the energy, or about eighty five percent of the energy that they uh, use in that state, and transfer it to something else that you have to rely on the weather on, um, they're going to be in deep trouble. And um, 
and, and you know, to some degree, all we can say is, okay, let's let them be the laboratory, the experiment, the guinea pig, or the lab rat, uh, and and hopefully the people there will learn quickly and dispense with people like this in politics who try to sell a, a, a stuffed pig. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm sitting here, Dan, Dan and Dan. I'm uh, and wheels over at the station. There's a little feedback there. Thank you. Uh, I'm sitting here, and I'm wondering how to phrase this to you, because I'm so absolutely adamantly opposed to any Green New Deal, or for that matter, climate change. And they are using, they being the left, are using a very uh, well-structured uh, movement against people like me, people like you and others, because they condemn our education, they condemn our literacy, and they uh, say, oh, those people that are scoffers, they don't know anything, and they've got the IQ of an angleworm. But, you know, when you stop and think about this whole thing with green energy, the new green deal, solar, wind power, etc., and the supposition that climate change is real, which I do not believe in, because I think we're seeing a cyclical change the other way, we are being duped into a complete control situation by the government, and that's, I think, the bottom line. Well, I tell you, Zeb, uh, it's awfully convenient that the one thing that they choose to throw themselves after uh, only results in more government, only results in higher costs for people, only results in the government being able to basically control what you drive, where you drive, how you drive. Uh, what kind of business you're in, um, everything else. And they, because they want to save the planet, uh, are going to be in charge. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing that uh, <laughs> more people with common sense don't say to themselves, wait a minute, uh, what's going on here? I, the fact of the matter is we all believe the climate changes. We know that. I grew up on the shores of Lake Michigan, which used to be uh, uh, Glacier, Michigan. Um, and uh, 10,000, 12,000 years ago was a huge glacier. All of the Great Lakes were across the upper Midwest. That didn't happen because somebody was driving a pickup truck or heating his home. Uh, it happened because the climate changed. And the climate changes uh, forward and backward and changes and uh, continent shift and uh, the good Lord has a lot to do with it, and I'm afraid man has very little to do with it. In fact, man, according to the, the, the experts, I, I'm not making this up, man's contribution to the total amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere through everything, through farming, transportation, industrial uses, is about 3% of the total carbon dioxide. They're trying to tell us that 97% that's natural doesn't uh, have any impact, and yet 3% does. And we also know that carbon dioxide actually has a very negligible effect when compared to other things like water vapor. And uh, so, you know, our scientists can match their scientists. The difference is they've got the government and the media mouthpieces. So if folks have, uh, uh, <laughs> if folks have questions that haven't been answered by, by all these... Uh, folks who are telling you how to live your lives very conveniently um there's a good reason for that dan is there any way that you see from your office looking out your window that uh, all the way here to my office looking out my window that we can stop this wave of stupidity that seems to have permeated itself through the Democratic Party and others that jump on the climate change bandwagon, some that are former attorneys, some that are former judges, some that are former anything, seem to have become the most professional climatologists, and now they're jumping on the bandwagon, and they're trying to get us all to go down this road of solar and wind only. This is idiocy. Yeah, well, I, I tell you, Zeb, uh it's kind of funny because you see the Chinese, they, they signed up for a deal where they don't have to do anything until the year 2030. Everybody else has to uh, kowtow to uh, reduce their emissions, and Europeans are fine with it because it'll keep down the growing 
uh, uh, countries, although folks over there get a little upset. We saw the demonstrations in Paris. Ultimately, um, ultimately, this has to run its course. It's very frustrating. It's going to be a waste of huge amounts of money and human potential. Um, and eventually, I mean, I think the, uh, the President Trump is uh, is on the cusp of uh, putting together his own scientific panel to go into some of the science to see what has been done on behalf of the government. Hopefully, that will uh, prove some results. And uh, people need to people need to be from Missouri on this. Yeah. Uh, you know, show me. Yeah. And and don't just listen to what these folks who don't know anything about it are talking about on TV. Amen. Uh, you know. Amen. We've got a caller with a question quickly. I've got three and a half minutes left. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air, please. Well, you know what people, humans, could do to lower the CO2 is, is there is nothing they can do. And it isn't going to change a thing. Again, we all know it's about cap and trade. It's about control. During the, uh, during the course of a, any year, if I'm not mistaken now, if I'm wrong, tell me. There are 200 volcanoes in various stages of eruption running around the world, constantly emitting things, which has an effect on the climate always. And, of course, the sun. And uh, what we are going to do as humans is, is, is laughable. And to think that there's people who actually want us to believe it, and there's people that believe them, that scares me. I'll hang up. Uh, respond to the caller because I think he's spot on. If you would, please, Dan. Yeah, I think he's spot on too, Zeb. I mean, the fact of the matter is, he mentioned the 200 volcanoes. We've got, think about the fact that the oceans cover the 70% of the Earth's surface. And there are volcanoes that are erupting underneath the ocean all the time and emitting huge amounts of carbon dioxide that aren't even counted. They're just part of that background that we talked about. And and ultimately, what we've got is folks kind of chasing their tail, looking for an excuse to grab more power and take more money from taxpayers. It's not just here. And folks will say, well, all these other, all these co- other countries have it too. They're, they're pushing for it. Well, sure. You've got politicians searching for power and money from their citizens' pockets, too, everywhere. There's a common denominator here. The government wants more control and more money. Absolutely. That surprise anybody. Uh, I'm going to take one more call, and caller, I'm only going to give you 15 seconds because then I've got to get to a break. Go ahead quickly. Zeb, I'd just like to add that this is, I believe, is a distraction that's going on that, sells the real resources right out from underneath our feet in this nation that we depend on. I think that's an excellent point. Dan, respond to the caller, if you would, please. Amen. That's all I can say. Uh, we God gave us enormous resources in this country and expected us to be good stewards of us of them, and that doesn't mean hiding them under the mattress, saying people can't use them to make their lives better. That's right. That's right. Uh, Dan, I'm going to ask you a favor. In the weeks to come, I'm going to be on the phone with you, and again, Wheels, we've got feedback on the line. Please run that a uh, little lower. Uh, I'm going to have you, with me on the air, break down the costs of what it's going to do to the people that are involved in transportation, the construction industry with the buildings and all the industry and also agriculture, and then when I think people start understanding the severity and costs and how it's going to put us back in a regressive state, that might be more educated than listening to somebody like uh, Governor Cuomo. Would you do that for me in the weeks ahead? You betcha, Zeb. All right. Dan Kish with the Institute for Energy Research. God bless you, and thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you, sir. God bless you and your audience. All right, sir. Thank you very much. One of my favorite all-time guests on this program, Dan Kish, and I'm going to follow through, and we're going to do that on a weekly basis, hopefully. Wow, we've got a lot of bills to pay. First of all, let's start with what's going on this week. This week, of course, the world-famous Idaho Regatta, June 27, 28, 29, and 30. Mark those in big red letters on your calendar, because this Thursday in Rupert on the square, they're going to have the show and shine. 
time where you can see up close and personal all these big, high-powered boats of the Idaho Regatta. Friday, they're going to have the boat parade in Burley, and then Friday afternoon, they're going to start with the testing and some of the races, and Saturday and Sunday, races all day long. You do not want to miss the world-famous Idaho Regatta, and it's going to be right there by the Burley Golf Course Marina. Don't miss it. For more information and ticket information, get your tickets right now. Get on IdahoRegatta.org or get them at the gate because I'll guarantee you it's going to be a lot of fun. The Idaho Regatta for this year. And then Coming up in the next week will be, of course, the great big 4th of July Independence Day fun, fun, fun over in Rupert. Celebrating Independence Day, the Rupert Way is the theme, and the Grand Marshal, Dean and Linda Cameron. Cameron, they're going to be having every day starting this Saturday with the big Christmas lighting breakfast on the square at 6 o'clock in the morning. They're going to have something every day. I mean, lots and lots of food, lots and lots of great music on Monday, July 1st. Uh, the third annual mutton busting competition at the fairgrounds and then of course don't forget on wednesday one of my favorite events that's the firecracker 500 lawnmower races at the minidoka county fairgrounds thursday july 4th the big parade sunday july 7th horse races at the fairgrounds Woo! i'm tired already great big fourth of july schedule for independence day over in rupert don't you miss it but, oh, and by the way, on Wednesday tomorrow, guess what? We've had a lot of people call and say how much they enjoy Josh Anderson at Sportsman's Warehouse getting on the air live, live while he's literally standing on the stream bed or in a river or out in a boat fishing on Sportsman's Warehouse, the old fishing hole. Brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. That's tomorrow at 10.06. You be sure and tune in. I, I learn a lot about fishing from old Josh. I mean, he is really, really good. Uh, quick note before we go to our next guest. As you can tell, I'm running a little bit behind here this morning. Please bear with me. Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley. Wow, they're having a summer clearance on mattresses and recliners. And you, you can share in the savings and the great deals. You better stop in there and check it out today at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Jeff and the entire outfit right there ready to serve you. They've got all your floor coverings. They're having a closeout on some carpets. All of this with a staff that really can help you with the beautification and the comfortization of your home. Stop in today. Lee's Furniture Floors and more. 459 Overland in Burley. Really nice people. And last but not least, before Debbie hangs up the phone on me, I want to remind everybody about Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. Oh, my goodness. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 4. And they've got everything. They've got all the side-by-sides, all the four-wheelers, all the watercraft, and it's going to be getting warmer. I mean, we're talking nearly up into the 90s. You better get a watercraft and have fun on the lakes and the streams of the river. All of this and more at Let's Ride. As I said, they're located at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World, and they've got all the accessories and a super service department to keep you running. Enjoy Idaho. Enjoy the outdoors. Stop over to Let's Ride, where the fun is sold. Right now, we're going to go to the Cache County Schools communications officer, and uh, I just absolutely have the deepest respect for this lady and what she's done for the entirety of the state of Idaho regarding education. Debbie Critchfield, how are you? Is she there? I am here. Can you hear me? I can now. All of a sudden, you just appeared. Good morning, and thank you for being on the program this morning. Thank you for the invitation. You know, Debbie, I've known you for a long, long time, and you wear more than one hat. I think at this time I'd like you to share with my audience uh, what you do, not only for Cassia County, but also for the state of Idaho. In Cassia, for the last uh, five, six years, I think, I've lost track. Um, I have uh, worked for this, the local school district 
as their um, public relations, community relations person, and, and other duties as assigned. And um, for the last five years, I have served as a member of Idaho State Board of Education and um, a couple of months ago uh, was um, elected through the membership to serve as the president for the coming year. I am very impressed uh, with your different titles, and I know that you have done an outstanding job. Let me, if I may, set the stage for what I wanted to have you come on and talk about this morning. I am really sick and tired, as I've stated to you before, about the constant dripping the constant dripping by various groups and people and news media about the low quality of Idaho education. How would you respond to what I just said? I think uh, that any opportunity that we have to talk about our successes is critical. Uh, The last few years there was a very deliberate campaign by some um, groups in the state, some of your listeners and yourself may recall, um, the Don't Fail Idaho mm-hmm. campaign. Um, the, the motivations behind that were not altruistic. Uh, it was to highlight a lot of the deficiencies in, in public schools, which from the outset, you know, I do want to talk about the positive um, achievements and, and where we're making progress. Having said that, no one in the state of Idaho says, oh, we're done, we're good, we don't have to do anything um, better. We know that there's always improvements to be made. However, the the messaging that took place for several years over the state had all been um, calculated to be very negative and to point out every single flaw without any type of corresponding uh, message of or, or context. I think that's the other part. Well, we maybe we you know we're not at this achievement level, but look at the growth that we've made, and so. School districts and teachers and communities have really felt hammered over the years that in spite of uh, positive growth and change, that's not what we focus on. Debbie, why the negativity? I mean, why the pounding the drum, negative, negative, nay, nay, all the time? Why can't there be a coalition of saying, hey, you know what? I know we've made strides and we've improved this. Uh, Maybe we could help to make this a little better. Why the uh, painting the picture like they did on television with a commercial of where students are let off a school bus in the middle of the desert, basically nowheresville, and giving the uh, perspective to the audience that our kids are not getting a a good education. I don't see what that helps to help anybody. Well, I have a couple of thoughts on that. One, um, scrutiny when uh, so much the, the, the lion's share of our state budget is directed to education. I think it is always appropriate in the sense of where are we spending money and what's our return on that investment. I, I think there's an appropriate um, balance to that. I, I think the campaign that we're referring to um, took that a, a little over the top. We also know that um, there are groups in the state that are um, very dedicated in, in promoting charter schools and um, providing um, choices for students in Idaho, which I am agreeable to. I, I don't think that, um, you know, that if there's a charter or if there's another option, um, if it's an online education, that, that parents can look at those options. The reality is that 70% of Idaho um, students are in rural communities. and Or, excuse me, 70% of Idaho is considered to be rural. And in those locations, there aren't a lot of choices. And so as a State Board of Education, and, and I know I can and say this for CAJA and, and here in the Magic Valley area, uh, districts, elected board members, and, and those that, um, that drive these ships, they want public school to be the choice for students and for parents. You know, when you say that, um, with only, uh, what, 30% really availability to go to a charter school and or have the option to, uh, the other 70%, that doesn't mean that they're not getting a good education. That doesn't mean that the state and people like you, as president of the State Board of Education, are not concerned about making things better, better every year. But why all the negativity and why all the writing about our kids are basically failures. Again, I think um, the focus on where are we spending our money, are they um, on appropriate programs, 
uh, are we do we have policies and laws that are are promoting the the outcomes that we want um, you know you and I spoke last week briefly about um, some information that was was published in in the paper uh, that had you know ranked Idaho I think what 39th um, you know, we see these groups, and it's not just one group. We see a variety of groups that come out with a variety of metrics um, on and how they they get to their their scoring. And one of the things that I thought was interesting, um, particularly with the the latest report, there was um, a, a line in there, and I the name of the the group was the Annie Casey Foundation, and I'm not as familiar with them, um, which that part's unimportant. Other than, you know, they talked about this sort of overall well-being of the child. Mm -hmm. They looked at several factors. And and one of the things that that Idaho, we got a high rating on um, family and community, but then we got a low rating on the number of children, um, three and four children, any type of early education or readiness, you know, children that are in school. One of the things that um, the, the State Board of Education has try to really elevate the conversation is on this readiness factor. As now, as of now, the state of Idaho does not um, mandate kindergarten. There's, there's no law that says you have to send your child to kindergarten. And we look at um, Idaho has no state-funded um, preschools, and uh, when we talk about having students get to these levels where they're able to achieve, and then we look at how many outside groups formulate their ratings on standardized tests and some of these other things, when we have students that aren't prepared and aren't ready when they enter school, it's more of a burden on teachers to do this catch-up game. Debbie, being a rural state, as Idaho is, Nevada, other states comparable, How in the world are you going to change the overall picture of education? I will say, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that by just saying, well, we'll throw more money at the problem and that will solve it, that's not the answer. Oh, I I couldn't agree more with that. I think it's finding the most efficient use of um, the money, the dollars that we have. What are are the investments that are going to get us to the outcomes that we need? We need... um, in addition to national research, we are looking statewide, and the we, the hat I'm wearing is, again, the State Board of Education, looking at this readiness component. Um, we know that, that children who are not at um, a proficient reading level by the time they're at the third grade, they fall progressively behind. And so we look at readiness. The other important aspect um, of getting us where we want to be is closing these gaps um, for um, certain um, demographics in the state, whether um, it's, uh, you know, our, our Native uh, students or our Hispanic students, um, socioeconomic um, indicators also tell us um, many things about student achievement. And so as we look at how do we get students when they very first start school, what do we need to do to engage families and parents to see the importance of, of um, some of those things that they need to know before they come to school? How do we also engage the, the community and, and private industry um, to help support some of these things that, that school districts don't have dollars for? So I think we look at the programs that we have, which ones are effective, what's moving us down the road, where we want to be, and if we're not getting the bang for our buck, then we need to uh, change course or we need to say, okay, that's not working. And, and in that sense, we talk about that from a state level um, that the state has a responsibility to help school districts identify what are the best strategies and best practices. You know, there was a sentence in the last line of that newspaper story the other day that I talked to you about that still leaves me a little cold and questioning, and I'm just going to read it, and then we can talk about it. It says, quote, The future of our state depends on creating opportunity for every child. Well, first and foremost, I don't think the state, per se, can create an opportunity for every child. I think that's a a little bit more than an ambiguous statement. Wouldn't you agree? I do agree with that. 
Um, again, it's interesting that this study rated us high for family and community engagement, but low on the educational side. So those two things, in my mind, are absolutely connected, that as families support the opportunity and the access and um, the desire to achieve in, in whatever the field is, um, then we're going to see the result on the other side. So I, I, I found that to be really interesting, that, those, that there was the high comparison with the family, the low um, information or the, the low rating on the educational side, because as I've, as I've said, this, this readiness and this accountability, the student accountability, um, it, it has to reside in the most logical place, and that is with the family. Right. When you and the board members of the Idaho State Board of Education get together, I'm sure that you have a criteria of different subjects that you address and you want to try to uh, uh, achieve and or enhance so that you can create a better uh, uh, educational opportunity for the entire state. I mean, what are some of the ideas that are coming out so that this negativity goes on the wane and you can see positive things for education? One of the things that we just talked about with access, the state board talks about access in the sense of removing any type of financial or non-financial barrier. Are there things within the system itself that keep people from achieving their educational goals, whatever that may be? So we are constantly looking at that. Um, Several years ago, the state um, adopted an initiative. It's called uh, a direct admissions um, program where... If you are a graduating senior in the state of Idaho, you don't have to apply to any of the state's colleges or um, universities that you have a direct admissions. We recognize that one of the the barriers getting um, onto that next level for students who wanted to do that was complicated, time-consuming, and costly um, college applications. So in the fall, letters go out, um, around 16,000 letters go out to seniors in the the state um, to say these are colleges that you have a direct admittance to. And so we're constantly looking at initiatives um, that, and and that's on, you know, the the high school end, but programs that um, remove regulation, remove um, any type of barriers that that keep not only um, students from achieving, but from schools being able to do the job that they that they know that they can do. One thing that I, I've almost uh, ran out of time in this segment, but I want to ask you about this. When you see the urban versus the rural and the demands of both those schools, whether they reside in Boise or Nampa or whether you're talking about uh, Murtaugh, uh, how are you ever going to come together so that you feel like everyone, everyone is getting a fair shake? I think, again, we look at um, any types of uh, state barriers that that limit local um, control, local um, ability to make the policies that they need to make that work within their community dynamic. We, we see a lot of things that are consistent across the state, regardless of whether or not you're in, you're in Boise or you're, you know, as you said, in, in Murtaugh. Um, our dual enrollment, our students that um, take classes that provide them college credit while they're um, a high school student. We have seen that go up. In the nation, we're fifth in college and career readiness, according to the, to those ma- metrics. We know that we're making improvements um, in our reading and our math. We have a ways to go, but, but we are showing growth. Another significant area in the state, regardless of where you are, the, the concentration and um, the focus on career technical programs, welding, um, diesel mechanic, any electronics, these types of um, learned train skills that students need that they can, regardless of what it is that they want to do, they have these abilities. We are, our graduation rate in the state is 80%, and in Kaja County, it's over 91% of our students graduate. This last year, Oakley High School had 100% graduation. And so we have dedicated teachers that are, that are working in school districts, local districts, that look at the the needs of their students and then make corresponding decisions to help to, to, to support the success. 
You know, Debbie, I know that this is an extra, if you will, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, from being on Cache County School Days, normally on Thursday. But I just wanted you to come on and highlight with your expertise in explaining this about really Idaho is doing a really good job of teaching and sending our children out into the world. And the naysayers and all the negativity, it, it just should be looked at and evaluated for what it really is. I agree, and, and, and just in the last minute or so, I, I, I do want to touch on one thing that I think is um, a critical part of this whole conversation. We talk a lot about accountability. Who is accountable to who? And um, are, is the state accountable to the federal government? Is the state accountable um, to ourselves? At what point do we say, okay, if the job isn't getting done, whose fault is that? Whose finger, you know, who are we pointing our finger? And I have for years believe that the ultimate accountability lies within the communities themselves. Mm -hmm. As a parent or for any parent that is unsure of the progress or is not sure what is happening at their school or maybe is dissatisfied, sitting down with the local building leadership to discuss what's happening at this school to ensure that my child can can be proficient and, and can excel. There's a lot of accountability that is out there. But at the end of the day, parents need to have these types of conversations with their teachers and with their building principals and ultimately with um, the leadership of the school district because that's where these great things happen is in the local districts. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to have this lady on my program this morning, the president of the State Board of Education and Cache County Communications Director, Debbie Critchfield. Thank you very, very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Wonderful lady right there and very, very knowledgeable. Debbie Critchfield. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right now, let's go to the weather forecast. And the weather brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. And they've been providing accounting services to you, you and the Minicasha area for well over 50 years. Serving you, your family, and your business with the best, the best of tax return preparation, tax planning, financial statement preparation, retirement planning, all of this and so much more. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin Crane and Company with offices in Burley and Rupert. Caller, I'm going to have the weather and then I'll be right with you. Stand by. Here's Gina with our weather forecast. We're expecting another beautiful day here in the valley and lots of sunshine. Mostly sunny skies is what we're looking at and a high of 83. Winds out of the east at about 5 miles an hour, switching to the west by this afternoon. Gusts as high as 23. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with below 42. Tomorrow, pretty much the same. Mostly sunny skies, high of 83. A slight breeze out of the southeast at about 6 miles an hour. Mostly cloudy for tomorrow night with a low of 52. By Thursday, back to mostly sunny skies, only expecting a high of 78. Partly sunny and 73 for Friday and Saturday, mostly sunny and 80. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebra Durant. All right, Gina, thank you very much. And brought to you again by our friends that really serve you. And that's Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. With offices in Burley and Rupert, work with the best. And they are Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. I only heard a part of Debbie's talk, but I do have a question that has troubled me ever since I heard about it. I have some nieces and nephews who are half Spanish. They are second and third graders and are in summer school. Their little Caucasian cousin goes to the same school that they do and was denied going to summer school because he's not Hispanic. I have a problem with that, Deb. Well, and I don't blame you for having the problem. I don't know the entirety of the whole story, and, and I would like to know a lot more. But I would urge you at this juncture to call her at her office and ask questions about this and find out if there is a disparity, if there is something that is needed to be changed. Uh, for me to sit here as a talk show host and give you an answer on why this happened, I think you can put yourself in my place. I can't do that, but the people in charge can. Well, I understand that, and I appreciate that advice. That's really good advice. It's just been 
I really haven't known what to do. So this came at a very good time to listen to what she had to say. Well, let me tell you that I've known Debbie Critchfield for a long time on this program, and I have the That's utmost res- I, I have the utmost respect for her and her honesty and integrity. And I urge you to call her, and if anybody's going to get the ball rolling to get you an answer, I promise she will do it. I will do just that. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nice lady. Uh, don't forget our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Uh, the very, very best of life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and so much more for you, your family, and your business. Mm-hmm. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert, they are dedicated and responsive to all of your needs and very devoted to making sure that you are protected. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. The number to call, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Holy cow! <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat that won't leave this morning. I tried to throw him back in the swamp, but it didn't work. want to remind you that all oh, the merchants over in Rupert are all set for the great big Independence Day celebration on the 4th of July, including Senator Kelly Anton. He wants to invite everybody up to the square on the 4th of July for the celebration and enjoy all the fun, the food, the fireworks, the horse race, Racing, lawnmower races, everything. Senator Kelly Anton, great guy, telling you to be a part of the Rupert Fourth of July Independence Day celebration. Dixon Oil, these are really good folks, and they always come out and help support these various issues. 602 South Second and Rupert, my goodness, they've been in business since 1951. Gas, oil, propane, everything. Daryl and the crew at Dixon Oil wish you a very happy and safe Fourth of July Independence Day celebration in Rupert. And Haruza Insurance, really good folks over there at 723 South 3rd Street in Rupert. Number to call, 436-4420. I'll tell you, protect what matters most to you with Haruza Insurance. They offer the best combination of competitive rates, coverage, and personal service. David Haruza can also give you options on retirement, too. Haruza Insurance, 723 South 3rd Street in Rupert, wishing you a great Independence Day on the 4th of July. Wow, it's uh, almost time to get out of here and get ready for the news from CBS, but I want to remind you again, we're going to have Lunch Bunch this week at Denny's Restaurant at 611 North Overland in Burley, and we're going to have a lot of door prizes to give away from Walmart's, Miss Foods, Hanson Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin, Denny's, so don't miss it. And we've got a special treat. Yep, Deanne and I and Denny's are going to offer a special treat to those that are at Lunch Bunch this Thursday at at 11.30. Don't miss it at Denny's America's Diner. Right now we're going to head for the news. Wheels, take it away, old buddy. Oh, here we go. This is up at the ranch, hour number three on a Tuesday, and uh, in just a few moments, Dr. History coming up. Stay tuned. want to remind you we're brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with the best of safe driving tires. Stop in and see them today. Along with some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Wheels, old buddy, old pal, would you please let everybody hear this good word for the Silver State Stampede? Nevada's oldest rodeo, the Silver State Stampede, roars into the Elko County Fairgrounds, July 12, 13, and 14. This PRCA-sanctioned rodeo brings you the thrill of pro rodeo riders going head-to-head in one of the world's toughest sports, rodeo. Action kicks off on Friday with a delicious tri-tip dinner for just 10 bucks. Old West Broad Friday, the Calcutta, Mutton Busting, PRCA Rodeo Action, and the always popular Ring of Fear. Dance the night away to the music of the Moonshine Outlaws. And on Saturday, show your support with Tough Enough to Wear Pink. 
Then on Sunday, round up the gang for the family day at the fairgrounds for even more rodeo action. Get your advance tickets today at Roy's, the JM Capriola Company, IFA, the Boot Barn, and the Elko Chamber Office. The best family entertainment this side of the Rio Grande, the Silver State Stampede. For more information, visit them at SilverStateStampede.com. Uh, thank you very much, and whoa, stop everything. Stop the boat, Gus, because the Idaho Regatta is coming to town this weekend, 27, 28, 29, and 30th, starting on Thursday with the big show and shine on the Square and Rupert. Oh, look at those beautiful boats. And then Friday, the boat parade in Burley. Friday afternoon, of course, you're going to see the racing start, and Saturday and Sunday, all the greatness of the Idaho Regatta, world known. It's going to be right there at the Burley Golf course marina and don't forget to go online idahoregatta.org and get more information get your tickets now special rates for veterans and seniors 62 and over you be sure and be there this weekend for the world famous idaho regatta right now the world famous dr history good morning good morning zeb how you doing i am peachy wonderful great fine how are you (laughs) did you make all that up well, it's not written anywhere. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing so good. You know, before we start today, I do want to say hi to some people. Okay. okay. Hi, people. <laughs> hi, people. Duncan from Australia. Really? Yeah, Duncan from Australia uh, wrote me uh, on, on my web page and likes the show. Stephanie wrote to me, and she's actually headed up to Yellowstone Park here in a few weeks. It and snowed in. Uh, they did get some snow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Jeff, who's been a faithful listener for quite a while, and then MJ is a is a lady that uh, asked me some questions uh, regarding um, uh, women pioneers, and I elected to just uh, visit with her personally because of the sensitivity of what she was asking. And that's now, all. I'm... Now you've opened the door <laughs> no, just no. to crack and sunshine is beaming in. <laughs> and if I were any kind of a talk show host, I would say, well, what are you referring to? And, and I'll just move right on to our <laughs> next subject. <laughs> anyway, thank you, MJ, Jeff, Stephanie, Duncan, for your comments. All kidding aside, that just solidifies the point that we've made on this entire program. Uh, with not only K Bar twelve thirty AM but also Zebbell.com, we're heard all over we the are. world. Yeah, and people go to my webpage, doctor history dot com and on iTunes. So we're gonna talk about uh the Native American women, the Indian women oh. and their religion a little bit and spirituality. Okay. So, you know, religion was not a Sunday affair. For the Indians. In fact, it is doubtful that an Indian woman viewed spirituality separately from the rest of her life. For her, religion was a, uh, I'm going to say, a conversation with the creator of all things. She lived in a world of mysticism, and we're going to talk about that, and symbolism, where every part of the earth and the heavens possessed a spiritual life. Uh, and, you know, you've seen, Zeb, where sometimes an Indian will kill a buffalo or an elk or deer, and they will thank the great spirit for that, uh, for that animal. But anyway, everywhere she looked, the Native American woman saw the forces of creation, and this sense and understanding of her surroundings actually gave her depth and actually dignity to her life. Now, of course, there were ceremonials when everyone focused attention on religious matters in an attempt to call on the almighty forces for help and guidance, and these ceremonies served to reunite the entire tribe. Mm -hmm. Now, Many of these early Indian societies thought it wise for each individual to find a special guardian spirit. Okay, Now, North American tribes shows that most cultures considered it less important for a girl to find such a guardian than it was for a boy. Uh, Yet there were a lot of Indian societies in which the Indian girls, the maidens, were expected to seek a supernatural helper. Okay, so keep that in mind. A, a helper, a guiding spirit, a supernatural. Um, now, so among the Nez Perce, it was in what is now northern Idaho, every 10 year old child was sent into the mountains to seek a, quote, guardian spirit. Now, wait a minute. They Ten go by old. themselves? Yes. At 10 years 10 of years age? 10 years old. This sacred... At 10 years of age, you couldn't even walk down to the street corner. <laughs> I couldn't. I could barely 
to talk. <laughs> so, but this sacred event being considered the most important event in the life of an individual. Now, the child was instructed to uh, climb to one of the highest peaks. Remember, 10 years old. Build up a pile of stones, sit down beside it, and focus attention on the purpose of this event. How long were they there? Well, we're going to get to that. Well, please. I will. The child was not to eat or drink anything and was to try to stay awake as long as possible. Now, after three or four days of this, the seeker, the child, usually fell into some kind of a sleep during which an animal appeared, gave the child a name, and taught it a sacred song. Okay? Then, this guardian was supposed to protect the child from danger from then on. Now, if for some reason the child had not received a dream or a visit from this guardian, whatever it was, uh, whether they were uh, not paying attention or they were homesick, it was considered sacrilegious to pretend that a certain animal had appeared. Furthermore, if the child did lie about having received a visit from a supernatural, it could expect to have danger rather than protection for the rest of their life. Ten years old. Three or four days with no food. Now, most 10-year-olds are what, third grade? Uh, yeah, probably. Right in that yeah, area? Yeah. Holy smokes. So, now, let's continue. Uh, so, remember, I said they went without food. So, it was called the dream fast. In other words, they were fasting. Yeah. And this was central among uh, some tribes called the Menominee, mm-hmm. the Potawatomi. The Menominee are back a big tribe right in my hometown yeah. area. The Potawatomi and other central Algonquin groups yeah. who lived around the area, like I said. You did the, that very well, by the way. Thank you, of the northern Great Lakes. <laughs> so far, I've pronounced everything okay. <laughs> I was nervous there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so here's a similar thing. When a youth or... Uh, a young lady reached the age of 15. They went off alone to a secluded spot. They built a tiny wigwam, just big enough for one person, and they fasted for eight to ten days. Holy smokes! Uh, yes, yeah, according to individual strength and endurance. Now, each day, the fasters, the people who were going without food, were visited by their parents. If by the eighth day, again, no food, Zeb. If by That's the, a Nutrisystems diet. <laughs> that is. If by the eighth day the young people had not received a vision, they were given the choice of quitting or continuing. Now, here's what happened. Their parents would visit them. And they would hand them two bowls. One had food in it, and the other one had charcoal. All right, two bowls. You got that picture? It was perfectly acceptable if they chose the food. That was okay. Now, they could go on home and try again some other time, but they were kind of exhibiting real strength if they chose the charcoal instead of the food. Do you know where you and I would be? (laughs) (laughs) We'd be at McDonald's, probably. (laughs) You know, so if they chose the charcoal, though... It would be really neat to have the guy at the window hand you a bowl of charcoal. Yeah, here, take this. (laughs) So, again, if they didn't take the food, they chose the charcoal, they would smear it over their faces and presumably would be rewarded for their perseverance by the appearance of a guardian. So if they hung in there, they might get this, okay? Now, in fact, it was very likely that anyone would begin to have visions or hallucinations after being without food and water I ate for a bowl of days. cereal at 4 o'clock this morning, and I'm already hallucinating yeah. for lunch. So, you know, those who successfully endured this test and had visions of, quote, things on high could be expected to be rewarded by a long life, happiness, uh, social elevation due to the protection and guidance of their guardian. So, you know, they didn't mess around with these little kids. They started them off pretty early. Now, here's another group. Today Uh, they'd be arrested. (laughs) Yeah, for child abuse. (laughs) So now among the Southeast Salish Indians. That's close enough. Okay. The Indian girls were sent out to find a guardian if their parents thought it a good idea for a girl to have this kind of help. Now, 90% of the boys, they sought guardians and were rewarded with visions. Only 20 to 30% of the young women received this spirit power. And the average woman who never obtained a helper still led a pretty good life, but those women who are fortunate to have uh, the visions were actually regarded as high as the men, uh, equals of men. No kidding. I didn't know all of this. Yeah, it, this is a, some fascinating information. Yeah. We don't know a lot about the Indian women, and I thought this was pretty interesting. Yeah. 
Now, in some tribes, only those young women who were still virgins were allowed to seek spirit helpers. But in other groups, a woman, a woman might be visited and promised help uh, by these supernaturals at any time in her life. So this was a pretty important thing, the supernatural guardian. Now, on the northwest coast, Lumi women, uh, and I'd never heard of that tribe, Lumi, L-U-M-M-I, L-U-M-M-I. Hmm, I haven't but either. Anyway, uh, women uh, who had special guardians actually performed what they call spirit dances at these big festivities, these parties. So the women who planned on presenting their spirit dance during a particular event arrived at the celebration early. They rehearsed their songs until the rest of the Indians arrived. Every dancer had a chance to practice her song with the drummers, sometimes humming it several times so the drummers could pick up the beat. Kind of an 18th century Woodstock. Yeah, and they had their own, they practiced these songs, and they had their own individual song, and the drummers kind of had to pick up, wow. okay, and, and anyway, so, but when it was time for a dancer to present her song, she began to groan and cry acting as if she was having difficulty catching her breath. The experienced singers and drummers would gather close to her, give her encouragement until she was able to rise and dance around the room, usually imitating the movement of the spirit that was in her. Okay. Now, the spirit that was in her could be a, a bird, an animal, an owl. A, she didn't knows? try flying off a cliff or anything, no, did no, she? No, it was oh, just okay. her spirit oh. animal that okay. was in her. Now, once a woman who had been chronically ill was brought to a gathering at one of these large village parties, I'd call What it. would you have been? I'd be an eagle, Zeb. <laughs> I'd be an eagle. <laughs> Not a duck. <laughs> so... Okay, so picture this. Here's this older woman. Okay, I'm she's still sick. working on the duck. Okay, so they're gathering at the village, and she'd been ill. Amazingly, she was able to rise from her sick bed, and with what appeared to be superhuman strength, she performed her spirit dance. All right, the women sang us. The woman sang a song about a uh, snow banked canoe. The next morning, the villagers were surprised when they woke up to find the village blanketed by deep snow. Okay, so she kind of almost prophesied. Now, the disbelievers pleaded with her to make the snow go away. So the woman painted her face, walked into the freezing ocean, walked back out, returned to her home. Almost immediately, a soft rain began to fa fall, which completely melted the snow before daylight. Coincidence? Oh, no, this is... <laughs> she had power, Zeb. <laughs> now, <laughs> Indian women played a definite, important role in a lar large variety of the Native American ceremonies, particularly those religious rituals which dealt with prayers for sufficient food supply, good health for the tribal members, and other parts of life to which the women were closely tied. And food was of utmost importance. Well, absolutely. Something I haven't had since 4. <laughs> since 4 o'clock. Yeah. Now, the Iroquois, they had a ceremonial cycle celebrated only women's activities. There were no festivals co uh, commemorating hunting or war. And most of the dances and ceremonies were thanksgiving for the fertility of the earth, especially for the crops, which were the women's chief concern. These religious celebrations were a lot of fun. Uh, dance was considered not only a spiritual rite, but a divine art as well, and designed by the Great Spirit for the pleasure as well as for worship. And these sacred social celebrations also served to arouse the patriotic excitement and keep alive the spirit of the tribe. And each dance was something they compare it to, uh, like our Thanksgiving, our Fourth of July, uh, uh, Fireman's Ball, all rolled into one. No so kidding. it was a big, huge event, this wow. dance. You know, what a celebration. I'd love to have been there to watch that. Now, in Montana, the Flathead Indians also, uh, they saw food as bound up with religion. Okay, there was a real connection between food and religion and the Great Spirit. Yeah. So each season of the year had a major ritual and several minor ones. The beginning rite of the spring season was the first, they called it the first roots ceremony. Mm -hmm. And this was always held before any woman was allowed to gather roots. So in this ceremony, two respected matrons, older Indian women, led a small party of women to a field known to be 
fruitful, and upon their arrival, the older matron would raise their arms to the sun, praying for success, security, and good health, and fortune for everybody. Next, she addressed the earth, pleading for the same blessings. The women then dug up small supply of roots, took them back to camp, where they were cooked by the wives of the chief, only the chief. When the meal was ready, the food, symbolic of all the food they would gather that season, was blessed again by prayers to the sun and the earth. Have you ever ate roots? Uh, carrots. Hmm. That's okay. a root. <laughs> I've never tried camas. Oh. Uh, now, camas roots, okay. you know, was big in this area yeah. over in the Camas Prairie. Of course, you being a duck and all. <laughs> Eagle. Eagles. Yeah. You said duck. I did, okay. So, now, here's another group, the Kootenai tribe, and you've heard of them, Uh, a woman's religious rite in which the participants gain special supernatural powers. Now, long ago, so they say, the spirits told the Kootenai women to form the, quote, the Crazy Owl Society. Okay. There's some of that going on today. <laughs> the crazy They outside. changed their name to the Democratic Party. <laughs> <laughs> to ward off epidemics, which they considered to be the result of disobeying the spirits. A supernatural might come to one of the members of the Crazy Owl Society at any time and tell her to sing one of the special songs. Woo. So, yeah, when the other women members heard her, they would go to their lo- to her lodge and dance and sing with her, and then she. Now this gets a little interesting here, Zeb. Okay, pay attention. Okay, <laughs> she's okay. She, you got this picture. She started with a procession. Yep. First visiting every lodge in the village. Yeah. They're all following her. They're following her. They're following it. Going like into the, the Pied Piper. Yes, going into the f- forest where she struck a tree. She hit a tree. Hit a tree. And she passed right through it. She walked right through the tree. This okay. is getting pretty serious okay. here. Followed by the other members of the society. They all they went all through, the tree? through the tree? They through the tree. It gets better. Who had the chainsaw? <laughs> they, no chainsaw. They walked through the tree. Now, after the proper number of trees had been passed through, she started running towards the west, followed by her band. Pretty soon, they all left the ground and ran in the air for a while. Everyone everyone landed, and they held the council. When the Crazy Owl members adjourned, they were hopeful that their ceremony had protected their families and loved ones from disease for a while. There's a plant that grows uh, quite well here in the West. Were they smoking some of that stuff? I don't know, but Zeb... How would you like to have been the first one in line that tried to run through the tree and it didn't work? (laughs) I'd probably have a, a headache. Now, here's another group. A uh, different ceremony was required from the, uh, they were called the Tensa women. The Tensa was a small tribe that lived north of the present side of uh, the Natchez in Louisiana. Anyway, in 1699, when lightning struck their large temple and bur- burned it to the ground, the principal priest determined that the tragedy had occurred because the spirits were angry. Now, this is not very pleasant to talk about, Zeb, but as was the custom among those people, the women of the town were told to bring their babies to be sacrificed in order to please the angry gods. And this was regarded as one of the highest of religious sacrifices. And there's more that talks about this, and I'm not even going to go into it. Please don't. Because it it is pretty gruesome. No, I don't want to hear it. So, now, excuse me, the Timucua Indian women in Florida, and I hope I said that right, they were required to undergo a similar rite. It was their custom, again, this is not very pleasant, their custom to offer the firstborn son to the chief of the village. On the appointed day, the mother took her son to a special place kept for the purpose. The chief took his place on the bench of honor, and the mother handed the baby over to one of her female relatives. Other women formed a circle and danced. Eventually, the sacrificing officer took the child. No, brother. Don't go there anymore. I'm not going to go. That's as far as I'm going to go. Don't go there. Anyway, now, okay, among the Pueblo Indians in the Southwest, where many of the ancient ceremonies continue even today, women have their own religious societies, and most of their ceremonial participation is through these groups. So they kind of have their own club, I guess you could say. But the most sacred dances are usually performed by the men alone, although the women help by doing such things as ritually washing their husband's hair and taking food to the dancers. Hmm. Okay. You only got two minutes here. (laughs) 
I'm almost done. Amen. And now during a lot of these observances, the women are required to prepare special foods, which must be brought to the ceremonial chambers in certain vessels at certain times. The wives also share the excitement of dance by keeping open house for the friends and relatives, and they dress themselves and their children in their best holiday clothes, really nice, you know, uh, uh, leather stuff, whatever they had. Yeah, leather now, stuff. Yeah. Now, the Hopi in Hopi town, Girls, as well as boys under the age of 10, are launched on their religious ceremonial careers by their imitation or their initiation into what they call the Kachina cult. Yeah, yeah. Have you, You've uh, seen Kachina dolls. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah I'm uh, trying to help you. Oh, okay, here. thanks. I thought, okay. okay, thank you. You got a minute. <laughs> uh, that's about all I'm going to need. Anyway, a few, so at age uh, 10. Okay, so a few years later, all the young people were expected to take the next step in their religious participation by joining one or more of several secret societies. Really? Now, there, uh, there were three exclusively women's societies, and a girl or young woman could actually join any or all of them. Now, in the late fall, uh, late summer and fall, when the men were busy with crops, uh, the women in these societies put on entertainments which were not only fun, but also contained prayers for rain and bountiful crops. So, you know, there was really a lot of religious uh, uh, things that went on among all the Indian tribes. And we've just kind of touched on, on a few of them. Some of them were pretty not so good. Some of which I retain would be, of course, the crazy owl club that was led by the duck. <laughs> And ran through trees and, and, and went up into the air running. You, you lost me when it came to running through trees. Hey, I am way over time, but I, I want to say thank you so much for a inspiring Dr. History. At least interesting, right? When I go home uh, some night late in the evening, I'm going to check up in the trees to see if you're up there. <laughs> or any crazy owls. There's that duck! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See ya. All right. Thanks, thanks Dr. History. Good job. Oh, I love having that Dr. History segment on my program. Uh, quickly, before we send it over across the river and through the snow and the desert, etc., I want to tell you all about Patterson's at 421 East Main in Burley. Curtis and Lorena, the whole staff, they are your electronics headquarters. Absolutely. They've got all your television sets, all your home theater systems, video surveillance cameras, something that all of us need to have have to protect our property. They've got the HughesNet internet, I mean car stereos and speakers, complete sound systems. Hey, what are you waiting for? Get in there and talk to the professionals for your electronic needs. Patterson's at 421 East Main in Burley, and they're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. 421 East Main in Burley, Patterson's. Stop in and see them today. And right now, over to our main studios. We'll be back in three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, thank you very much, and thank you to my dear friend, Dr. History, better known as the Duck. <laughs> He's going to love that driving home. Hey, don't forget our friends, Dino Septic Service. Oh, they've recently expanded their business to better serve everybody and be there when you need them. Absolutely. With the best of septic tank pumping and liquid waste removal, septic inspections, sewer and sink drain lines clean, water and sewer lines installed, backhoe services. Woo! The list goes on and on of service to you. Absolutely call Dino Septic Service at 436 6 Five two six or in Burley six seven eight one six three eight. Fast, fair, friendly service. I know they've worked for us. Outstanding. With that big truck that says "Smells Cargo" on the way, Dino Septic Service. You call them right now. Well, I bet he's going to love following that ad. Is here we go now with our next guest, the Deputy General Counsel for First Liberty, and we say a good good morning to Jeremy Dice. How are you, sir? 
I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Zeb. Well, it's my pleasure, and really I mean that it's my pleasure because we're going to be talking about something that has concerned me and is concerning to me in this great country of America. Our country was founded upon Judeo-Christian principles. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care who wants to argue. I'm going to maintain that. And so the use of a cross, whether it's at Arlington or whether it's a cross in Maryland, uh, known as the Peace Cross, I don't want to see anybody attack them or try to tear them down. What's going on with the story about the Supreme Court ruling? Well, look, I think we've got uh, every reason now to think that uh, that's going to be okay from here on out. We, we just got word last Thursday that the Supreme Court of the United States uh, decided our case, the American Legion versus the AHA case, that we've been representing the American Legion on now for, I don't know, five years, six years or so now. Uh, and the decision of the court was uh, was rather common sense in what I think most people would, would understand, but it, that doesn't make it any less a landmark decision for religious liberty. And the reason for that is that the court basically said that, look, these uh, th- these memorials were built, and they've got specific meanings back when they were built. They may have multiple meanings right now, but it's perfectly fine to invoke anything religious on the, the public square. And so when presented with an option of either allowing a memorial that was shaped like a cross, uh, erected in 1925 by the American Legion, designed in 1919 by mothers who lost their sons in World War I, uh, when presented with the option of either tearing that memorial down or letting it stand, the Supreme Court said, we're going to let it stand. And it was seven justices that said, we're going to let it stand. So this is a really important decision, not just for the Bladensburg World War I Veterans Memorial, but for religious liberty in general. You know, Jeremy, what is it, uh, since I was a young man, which, of course, that was a long time ago, and they still circled the wagons at night, but what is it that's happened and occurred in this country that there's this animus, there's this hatred, there's this purging of anything that has a sign or a significance of Christianity? Well, part of it has been a, a certain legal test that the court has employed or allowed lower courts to employ when they want to employ it that is heavily subjective. That was called the, the Lemon Test, and that was based on a case out of 1971 called Lemon versus Kurtzman, and I don't need to go into the legal weeds of things to describe the test, but effectively it was a subjective test that looked at whether or not something that had religious imagery, language, or symbols on it on the public square was somehow endorsed by the, the government or the state actor in this case. Well, the Supreme Court said that that has been completely unworkable. And quite frankly, with this decision last Thursday in the American Legion case, the lemon test is gone. Uh, what, what groups have been doing for the last 50 years now has been to try to, to weaponize the Establishment Clause to cleanse the American countryside of anything having to do with the religious. Well, those days are over. Uh, and what the court has said now is that, look, if it's religious and it's on public property, what's the big deal? Uh, if, for instance, this memorial is shaped like a cross. Why is it shaped like a cross? Well, because mothers who designed it back in 1919 for their sons chose the gravestone of the, 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 gravestone, the image of the gravestones of their sons in World War I to, to have as the thing that would remember their sons. And that happened to be a cross. And the court said, that's okay. You're allowed to do that. There's, 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 that memorial, in other words, does not somehow erect a cathedral right there in the public median that stops every car and forces them to be baptized or to engage in some sort of religious behavior. It just simply stands there in silent witness to the history and the memory of these men who died in World War I. So this is a really important decision that I think is going to have really far-reaching consequences, at the very least. It takes away that weapon that used to be used to weaponize the Establishment Clause and bulldoze uh, memorials like it around the country. Did it surprise you, Jeremy, and this is where your legal expertise comes in, uh, Did you uh, were you shocked over the 7-2 to two ruling on the Supreme Court? I would have thought 5-4, but 7-2 to two really left me kind of awestruck in a way. Well, it was 7-2 in the, the general principle, and this was a kind of a, a, what we call a plurality decision. So there, was, there were six different opinions that were written. You kind of kind of trace the thread through the whole thing. So the 7-2 doesn't surprise me much, because we understood from the argument that there were quite a few leaning in the direction that we expected them to go, and ultimately did. What I think was surprising was uh, that that's the case that, that has actually two dissenters to it. 
why the two dissenters here would want, would stand for the proposition that this memorial and ones like it need to be removed from public, the public square. And that is just shocking to me, that there would be a continuation of this weaponization of the Establishment Clause that was meant to fully protect and welcome folks into the public square, not to drive them from it. But I think most importantly, with this majority opinion that's been written now and the seven justices that have agreed with this statement, those types of memorials, those types of symbols, those types of activities even, that have been a long-standing part of our tradition in this country, those are now, as Justice Alito wrote in his opinion, and seven justices agree with here, are presumptively constitutional. There is now more freedom today because of that decision in this country than we have had in decades. Judge Ginsburg, uh, one of the comments she made after she wrote her dissenting opinion said, quote, By maintaining the peace cross on a public highway, the commission elevates Christianity over other faiths and religion over non-religion. That statement bothers me. I'd like you to define that a little bit more, if you would, please. I wish I could. You'd have to ask Justice Ginsburg to figure out exactly what that means. But the majority was not uh, trying to downplay the religious nature of this symbol. They, they acknowledged that, in fact, it is a Latin cross, or actually it's a Celtic cross, but why, why differ, why quibble? The, the reality is that the cross is an important symbol in Christian tradition. Uh, Justice Ginsburg outlines that very clearly in her third paragraph of her, of her dissenting opinion. But all the justices recognize that it is a Christian symbol, and they would recognize that a Star of David on public property is a Jewish symbol, and so on down the line of whatever religious symbols or languages or whatever might be there on public square. The question isn't about what the image is or the symbol is or the memorial might be. The question is whether or not that is permitted to be on public property. And if we're going to bar individuals from putting religious imagery on public property or sustaining those monuments and memorials that invoke religious language, imagery, or symbols, well, then we're going to have a real problem. Because what the court was saying is that if we have a government that is roaming around the country trying kind of on a seek-and-destroy mission to tear down these memorials, what that signal would send to the rest of the country is a hostility to religion that is extremely unwelcome by the Constitution. And that is even more important than any any message that might remotely be sent, that there is some form of endorsement by the government because this image or symbol or monument appears on public land. And so I'm really grateful that the justices made that clear distinction. Contrary to the dissenting opinion, which says that this could somehow be an endorsement, what the justices are saying is that if we allow the logic that the American Humanist Association put forward in this case to stand, not only would this memorial need to be knocked down, but so would every memorial like it, whether that's in your backyard or in Arlington National Cemetery. And that level of destruction would be so obviously hostile to religion, it could never abide under the standards of freedom that we expect in this country. The only thing that I would like to uh, end this conversation with is a question and a statement. Yes, this victory was won for that cross, and hopefully will be a victory for other crosses across this great United States. But that being said, I don't think the ACLU is going to sleep on that without doing something to be counterproductive. Your thoughts? Well, I, they can if they'd like to. I, I just like to know what they're going to use to challenge now uh, every m- monument or memorial like it. They're gone. The case, the weapon that they had before was the uh, the lemon test, and frankly, it, it, it's absolutely dead in the context of memorials and monuments and that sort of thing. Uh, and we believe that it is more or less dead in every other context as well. Functionally, it, it's 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 obsolete at this point, and so they have no weapon to hurl against these types of practices, and so. What Americans now face today is a prospect of freedom that welcomes into the public square religious uh, monuments and memorials that invoke the religious, symbols that have religious imagery on them or whatever you have within the public square, and even activities, the court said, that are religious in nature. Think uh, prayers before public meetings and school boards and city councils and county commissions and, and things like that. In God We Trust, emblazoned upon public buildings, Ten Commandments monuments. Those types of things are all now presumptively constitutional. And we're going to see very soon whether or not things like nativity scenes and creches and things like that 
are, are permitted to remain on the public square as well, I think they're going to be okay. Good. But the question mark remains whether or not those are going to be out there. But, you know, truthfully, I don't know how the other side is going to challenge these things because all the cases they relied upon have, frankly, been invalidated by this decision. And so we face a future that uh, may be unfamiliar to uh, several generations right now because we've never known this level of freedom. Absolutely. And this level of freedom is something very sweet that our founding fathers wanted for us. They would have been appalled at the chance, at the choices that these other groups have made to weaponize the Establishment Clause. Uh, this is clearly a common sense, landmark decision that is going to protect our religious freedom in this country for decades, if not centuries to come. Jeremy, quickly in the time I have left, tell us and my audience a little bit more about First Liberty. Well, First Liberty Institute is a nationwide religious liberty law firm. We only litigate issues of religious freedom, and our mission is simple. We defend religious liberty for all Americans, whether that's in the schools, the houses of worship, in the public square, or in our military. We believe that everybody deserves religious freedom, just like the Founding Fathers wrote about it in, in the, our founding texts. And so, you know, the privilege that we have is that because of people like you and our listeners who donate to First Liberty Institute at firstliberty.org, we never charge our clients. And so we've been able to partner with some of the nation's biggest law firms to defend groups like the American Legion and others for free because we believe if the government has violated your civil rights and your religious liberty, you shouldn't have to pay an attorney to get it back. Jeremy Dice, Deputy General Counsel for First Liberty, I salute you, sir, for the job you do, and I please hope that in the future you'll come back on my program. Always a pleasure to be here, Zeb. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Wow, that is a great, great victory for that cross and other crosses across the United States. And Jeremy Dice, of course, Deputy General Counsel for First Liberty. They were right in there fighting for common sense. Thank you. Uh, we got to go to the weather forecast. My goodness, I just looked at the clock and wheels is going zab. Yes, sirree. The weather brought to you this hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. And the number to call, Don and the crew, 324-7657. Or you can go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. Oh, delicious meats. For maybe that company picnic or maybe a family reunion and the marinated pork ribs, the tri-tips. Oh. Or maybe the bratwurst. They've got bratwurst that just knock your socks off delicious. All of the meats from Scarrow's Meats, really, really good. We'll have more about Scarrow's Meats right after Gina and the weather. We're expecting another beautiful day here in the valley and lots of sunshine. Mostly sunny skies is what we're looking at and a high of 83. Winds out of the east at about 5 miles an hour, switching to the west by this afternoon. Gusts as high as 23. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with below 42. Tomorrow, pretty much the same. Mostly sunny skies, high of 83. A slight breeze out of the southeast at about 6 miles an hour. Mostly cloudy for tomorrow night with a low of 52. By Thursday, back to mostly sunny skies, only expecting a high of 78. Partly sunny and 73 for Friday and Saturday, mostly sunny and 80. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebedee. I appreciate her job with the weather. She does a phenomenal job gathering all the stats. Thank you very much, Gina. And the weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. That number again, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time at Scarrow's Meats. You know, earlier, and I welcome phone calls. Give me a call on the uh, old landline right now. I started this morning telling you about a new business that's serving you. It's called Greystone Crossing. Feels like home. Absolutely independent senior living. And they're located at 1221 21st Street. Now, if you're not familiar with that location, it's on El Fresco Road. I got to say that again without biting my tongue. El Fresco Road, about a mile east of Walmart. And it's a wonderful, wonderful facility for seniors. New building. It was completed in May of 2018. 12 bedrooms, 14 bathrooms. Everybody 
has their own clean and comfortable, beautifully decorated. I urge you to find out more about Greystone Crossing. I love that name. Independent senior living. Like I said, it feels like home. Call Kelly or Matt at 650-4979. That number again, 650-4979. The number for Greystone Crossing, 1221 21st Street in Burley. You be sure and stop over and say hello to those good folks and find out more. We're, every ad's going to be different. Every time we talk about them, we're going to talk about some of the other great highlights of Greystone Crossing. All right, give me a call, 436. I couldn't say, uh, what was the name of the street? I couldn't say, Alfresco. It's not that hard. Just take your time, Zeb. Everything will be okay. Uh, give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I have an honest question. I want you to answer this. Have you, watching television or looking at pictures in the newspaper of Joe Biden, Have you noticed a distinct change in his looks? I was talking to a gentleman back in D.C. two days ago, and we were talking about uh, the age of some of the candidates like Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, and, of course, even Donald Trump. And when you look at Biden as of recently, he's starting to look very, very shallow very pale, very pasty, very, I don't know, I don't want to use the word uh, feeble, but frail, I think, is a word that kind of uh, covers everything. And his actions and his mannerisms seem to be very limited. Is it just me that's noticing this? Or have you? Joe Biden, in the last, oh, I'll say four months, really looks like something is bothering him, which may be older age. Think about it. Uh, calls are welcome, 436 224 Oh, this is, this is the corker right here. You know, there is so much to erase our history. There is so much to abolish names and statues of our nation's history. General Robert E. Lee. I don't know why the left is so infatuated and so much uh, dedication to get rid of. We've got to get rid of that name. Why, we can't have anything that says General Robert E. Lee. All the schools, all the uh, businesses and the buildings, why, we've got to get rid of that name. They don't realize that after the Civil War, General Robert E. Lee, as person... Robert E. Lee was one of the great uh, communicators, if you will, to bring this nation together and heal this nation. Look it up. And anything or any item named Robert E. Lee should be a plus for remembering the good of a man that really helped bring the nation back together after the Civil War. But no, now, schools are going out, and I'm not making this up. Schools and businesses are going out and trying to find other people named Lee. Lee, Seriously, they ought to call Kim Lee. And uh, try to at least get rid of the Robert E. and still keep the name Lee on grade schools, elementary schools, high schools, businesses, buildings, so they can keep the cost down. Isn't that crazy? They're so ashamed of Robert E. Lee, but yet they want to keep the cost down and try to find somebody else in the community or the state named Lee so they can honor him. Oh, my grandmother used to say, ay, 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 ay. Hey, by the way, let's take some time here and salute our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, they've got all the tires right there at all seven locations for your safe driving. And uh, whether it's for your car, your pickup, your SUV, all the tread designs, all the different sizes, oh my, the way you drive, all this... 
You stop in and see them today, and they will put tires on your car that are just right for your style of driving. I know these people know tires. Mm-mm. They've all graduated in the course called Tireology, and believe me, along with that, they know all about brake service, with the best in brake service, with highly trained technicians, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, all of this and more, but above all, the best in service. Absolutely. With Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley, the best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. What have we got cooking for tomorrow? Tomorrow being Wednesday, we've got my old buddy back in Indianapolis, Indiana, Dave Bego, is going to be on the air. Then we have a gentleman coming on that's going to talk about all the different fun, fun for you and the family at the Rupert Fourth of July Independence Day celebrations. At 10.06, we have Josh Anderson with Sportsman's Warehouse, and he's going to be out fishing someplace, and he's going to tell us all about how to catch the big ones. And and uh, then we've got at 10.30 a story about the Boy Scouts and, quite sadly, their demise. And we're going to be talking about that. Uh, all of that on tomorrow morning's program, including a lot of your calls and comments. I thank you very much for everything you do. Greatest audience in the world. And again, a reminder, on Thursday, we're going to be over at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner, for Zeb's Lunch Bunch at 11.30. Special treat. Deanna and I and Danny, it's going to give you a special treat, so be there on Thursday. Until tomorrow morning, the way things were, the way things ought to be, and the world needs more cowboys. We'll see you then. Zeb at the ranch. Have a great day.